Hello and welcome back on the IBP series powered by Camelot. Have you noticed? We've changed the color and the graphical fonts just to make it a bit more appealing on YouTube. Today, this is part four of the optimizer journey. So far, we've seen the concept, the configuration, the aggregated constraint. And today, let's position ourselves as an end user trying to resolve typical use case supply chain issues. Let's see that right away. What type of business case can we cover with the optimizer? Really many, sincerely many. Here, I've listed them only 10. And let's start with the first one, production resource optimization. Let's discuss the first use case, production resource optimization. Here in this use case, we've got two production resources, resource one and resource two. One being the alternative resource of the main resource, this one. Why is it main? Because it's cheapest. Production cost is cheaper compared to the production cost of the alternative resource. If I do the planning like this, any demand of product will go and fill up the first one before using the second one. On the other hand, I have defined that I have no inventory holding cost and that my late delivery cost for the green product will be very expensive, less for the orange and the minimum for the blue. So what happens when I do the planning? First, I get the plan of the 50 as soon as possible on the cheapest resource. Then, still the green is planned as soon as possible on the, on the first and, and cheapest resource. Then the 30 of the green product. And all this is really driven by the late delivery cost. Okay. And then it goes with the orange. And the orange says, okay, I, I, I accept a little deliver, a late delivery. But that's much less late delivery compared to placing here on the cheapest resource, this orange part. Therefore, it goes to the alternative one because 50 compared to 10, but a long delay, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's preferable. Then continues, next orange goes here. Next orange goes here. Okay. We can discuss the orange to which should have been placed here. Okay. Then Continue with the blue and possibly use two slots of the blue, as, 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 allowing some uh, late delivery because it doesn't cost that much. Okay. And goes the five here and the 10 here as well. So this is a typical case where we have a nicely and smoothly a load of the production resource, main and alternative, according to the demand and the different penalties. Obviously, this works for two, but it can work for three, four, five, whatever number of resources you have. Then the challenge here is to maintain all these costs in order to have the, the behavior of the optimizer concerning this production resource optimization. Let's go now in the system and visit the different data involved in this scenario of production optimization. On one end here, we see the resource, the main resource mix 01 is being used severely to such a point that there is a severe overload for any period. Whereas the second resource, which is the alternative one, has no load yet. Why? Because heuristics is based and used quota management, which production ratio for production version one is 100%, and this, the other production version has zero. Therefore, does not use the production. From the demand perspective, we have uh, the, the following customer demand that is about the same value for all the five products we consider in this scenario, about the five products with the same quantity, more or less, uh, in each period. And these products are delivered from local DC1 and local DC2, each product. Hein? Uh, then these ones are replenished from regional DC, which one is replenished from plant PP01, where we've seen that we have this severe capacity issue. And if we go in more detail even, we see that the, this load is currently based on the five product calling for the production quantity, which overload this resource. Now we want the optimizer to solve this and better use the second resource. Uh, for that, we need to define the different costs. For that, I'm going to go in 
another template, which is the enhanced rule-based cost modeler that we deliver, and which one, which one is made of a number of worksheets splitting the different costs by different domains. So we've got on one end the demand cost, and remember the demand cost, we said that one product would be would have more priority, which is the case for product 000, with a, a late delivery of 5,000 and a non-delivery penalties of 50,000, whereas the second product is 10 times less, the, the third product is even 10 times less, and so on and so forth. To such extent that whenever we will run an optimizer, we may already uh, assess that those two products will not be planned at all by the system. Why? Because it costs only five not to deliver, but on the other end, it costs a certain production cost to produce. And we see the production cost is either 10 or 50, depending the production version 1 or the production version 2. So if it costs me 50 or 10 to produce, but I have a penalty of 1 if I don't, if I don't deliver, you can imagine that the, the optimizer will not produce at all this, at least the, the last product for sure. Okay? I also said that in order to avoid any side effect on the optimizer for this particular scenario, I've said the inventory cost to nothing. Okay, no transportation cost, no production uh, except the production cost, no resource cost, and so on. So mainly the demand cost, which is here seems to be a unique value, but in fact, as you can see, we have here a time phase cost distribution, which is five thousand and fifty thousand. 500 and 5,000 and so on for the full horizon. Okay, while I'm in this cost modeler uh, template, let me also show you that in this cost modeler, this is rule-based, we can apply a number of rules in order to manage the cost. Okay, inventory rules, production rules and so on, so that the cost management becomes much more easy compared to the standard cost management in IBP. Now, let's return to the planning here, and now let's run the optimizer just to see what's happening. It's going to take one minute or two. Let's run the optimizer. So here, the optimizer has now run, and we see that now the production is now split against the two resources, MIX01 and MIX02. We see that the first, the main resource was initially very overload, and now the optimizer is giving a nice 100% everywhere, focusing on production of P01, 2, and 3, okay, and mostly the, the, the first one, whereas uh, the second resource is not fully loaded, okay, and still produce product one, uh, 0, 1, 2, and not the product 3 and 4, such so to explain that it will probably leave some demand uh, uncovered uh, due to the optimizer. It could have produced, but has decided that it was less expensive not to produce at all for those uh, two last products, or very little, in fact. Okay, so we see that the optimizer has done a nice job. Okay, now we have to we have to consolidate this by checking the demand. So on the on the demand side. What we see is, once I've removed the filter on the key figure, remove the here, we see that from a demand perspective on the most expensive product, we could deliver mostly the demand, splitting the quantity on the two production resources to some extent, okay? Uh, coming from LDC1, LDC2, this is not uh, the point here. We see then second product is still covered, but then we see uh, that there is some difference whenever we go a bit in the future for the third and the fourth product. The third product is even not delivered or very little delivered. Okay. And the two last ones are just, I mean, the last one is just not delivered at all which illustrates clearly what I mentioned. So the non-delivery late delivery cost out of this other template are very critical to drive the optimizer to plan and prioritize what product should be delivered first, okay? And then that the production cost also define that which resource should be used in, uh, in priority before the next one, 
And then the cost formula will decide through the, uh, the optimizer logic will decide whether it produces or not according to the penalty compared to the production cost. This is the end of the first use case. Conversely to what I said at the beginning that there would be 10 demos in the same episode, I have decided to do differently because it's too long, way too long. Here it has taken me already three months to go with and prepare the five first steps. So that's why I'm wearing different garments, as you can see, because the weather is changing, by the way, this is spring. So next week we will see the storage space optimization and so on and so forth, one, one episode a week. In the meantime, I hope you appreciated this demo for the resource optimization. And if so, a like or a subscription in YouTube and LinkedIn is really all I wish. Bye-bye now.